Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. I know I am late, but we are here with put a ring on it. Child, without further ado, honey, y'all know what y'all supposed to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, they're still sitting with Dr. Nicole and Charlena is still ready to leave, honey. She want that key. She's like, I'm ready to go. He's like, no. She's like, don't tell me no. Don't. Okay, so at first I was like, why does Charlena get so hyped? But this is the thing. All of these women are on here because now they can be more vocal about what's happening behind closed doors. And I think what it is, is Charlena is really just now finding her voice and she feels like all the time you're telling me no. You're telling me stop. You're telling me what I can do and what I cannot do. No, I'm fed up. It's like when you, it's like when you have a child and you continue to tell the child what to do and what not to do. And then one day, they talk back and you're like I know you ain't talking back I am the parent you are the child but the child has had enough the child is like no like I don't like the way you're treating me I don't like the way you're speaking to me and even as my parent I feel like you should show me some respect and I feel like that's what's happening with Charlena and Otis now I might be wrong but that's what I feel like because she gets so upset when he says no and stop and I feel like he says that to her all the time but then again child sometimes he be acting like he's asleep so we don't really know She's like, don't tell me no. So Dr. Nicole does not want them to leave because they're not gonna resolve anything. Charlena was like, well, I can't trust him. Like, <laughs> he's embarrassed me enough. I really don't have any tears for him. I just don't. Charlene, no, that's right, honey. Mira J. Blige, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna shed a tear. So she looks like she's about to lose it on him. She's shaking, she's ready to go. Dr. Nicole is ready to continue with the conversation. So Dr. Nicole tells them that trust is freedom. And if they give it to their partner, then their partner will respect it. What partner are you talking about? Honey, not none of these partners. These people in the room right now? Oh, no, ma'am, honey. So then we visit with Shay and Fonzo. So she asked Shay what she thought about her date. And she was like, yeah, he was well put together and whatnot. Shay don't know nothing about this date, honey. She don't know nothing. Everything after Alfonso walked in with that shiny faux Sachi shirt is a blur. Okay, she don't know nothing about a star. All she knows is she left him with that girl that was about to cluck her with that play. <laughs> So that's all she knows so she starts explaining what happened and how alfonso didn't speak when he walked in and he was like i spoke i was like yay alfonso no you did not okay no you didn't you came in and you had a seat so she was like no you came in you sat down you was kikiing i initiated speaking he said well at this point you know they arguing they cussing and then the date just ended so she goes you know she backed up out the chair and it's a confrontation Okay, Shay, I'm gonna need you to tell the story exactly how the story went. You went in on her. You got started with her. You addressed her. Then she got up. You started walking towards her and she grabbed that plate and it was about to go down. And then Alfonso finally decided to step in, honey, because he was sitting there acting like he was asleep. He decided to step in and ushered you into the parking lot where you continue to love and hip hop. So girl, goodbye. So Dr. Nicole goes, is that what you wanted, a confrontation? She was like, no, but I wanted a certain level of respect because this is my spouse. Now, when she says spouse, I'm like, wait a minute. Let me hop on the Googler, honey, because sometimes I be thinking I'm crazy. Like these shows will have you thinking you're a cuckoo ca because I was like, a spouse is a husband. So she was like, he's my spouse. We're here because we want to get married. I'm his girlfriend. He's my boyfriend. Shay. Either you telling on yourself, honey, because you know they say they got a little fakery and foolery with the put a ring on it and whatnot. Either you're telling on yourself or you don't know the meaning of spouse. You have to be married to be a spouse. Girl, are you even his emergency contact? Honey, you probably got the baby mama written down. Honey, I don't trust nothing about Alfonso and all that grinning. I know it's probably a nervous laugh and whatnot, but I just don't trust the child. That lady did keep calling her his wife. She was like, you better get your wife. You better get your wife. Honey, I don't put nothing past it moving forward so dr nicole said okay i'm gonna say this in the most respectful way okay it's not the same thing she said well it is to me she said it can be to you but it's not reality shay said it's not your reality but it's mine shay pipe down honey you're wrong in this instance you're not his spouse Spouse implies something totally different unless y'all left dr ponytail in the dark honey if you're married just say that Y'all ain't got time to be playing with y'all, honey. Let me find out. Shay does not want to hear nothing that Dr. Nicole has to say. So 
she says she wants him to take things seriously. She's tired of him always smiling and laughing and she's getting sick of it. So she's saying how she feels and how he emotionally depletes her. And he's doing that nervous laugh that he likes to do. He's like, I don't know where this is even coming from. Like we went from the restaurant to this. He would get on my nerves. He is too goofy and he doesn't take her or her feelings seriously. So he's like, you know, I'll work on it, but we ain't going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere and I ain't going nowhere either. Didn't I tell y'all that? Didn't I tell y'all that he thinks she's the girl that's never leaving? That's why he treats you like that. Let me tell you something. If they don't think that you will leave them or they don't think that they have anything to lose, then they will continue to treat you the way that they're treating you. Also, you got to teach them how to treat you. And honey, we're going to get into that a little bit later when your mama and your auntie stop by. Hey, Anissi, I like Anissi. Child, let's continue moving forward so in her confessional you know Shay be talking in circles honey saying the same thing but I ain't saying nothing she's like I don't think that he thinks it's that bad girl he does not take you seriously at all because he knows you gonna talk he knows you gonna fuss he knows you gonna fight and he knows you gonna stay so I don't want to hear nothing else about it so then Dr. Nicole asked about the second date Kenneth said no so then baby shorty rolled her eyes she was like oh my god honey she said he needs to get someone that he's physically attracted to. That's going to keep him. She is pissed. And she's like, please, y'all find this boy somebody so he can leave me the hell alone. Shorty does not like Kenneth. She doesn't like him. She doesn't. She's pissed that he keeps not liking these women that he's going out with. And she's waiting for somebody to take him off her hands. It's so obvious. So Shorty said yes to a second date because she wants to go out again with um, her date. So then she asked Shay and she said no. And of course, Alfonso said no. Charlena said no. And Otis said no as well. But quiet as it's kept, I feel like Otis said no because he did not want Charlena to bop him. Okay. Because I really think he wanted to say yes. I mean, y'all DMing. Might as well. Boy. Moving forward. So Dr. Nicole asked how Charlena felt that he said no. And she was like, I mean, they already probably met up. So, I mean, what are we even talking about? Listen, in light of last season, I don't put nothing past nobody. She know her man. Okay. She knows him. She's not that upset for no reason. Now that's what I personally think. And I could be wrong, but I feel like she's not getting this upset just to get this upset. She's like, you know what? I, actually, I'm good. If you find me a good date, I'm going to be good. Charlena, this is not the bachelorette, honey. This is not millionaire matchmaker. This is not that. Girl, they did not come up here to hook you up with somebody new. Travis is a whole fool. So she gives them this week's assignment. It's to meet with their family to talk about their spouses. So baby, after she gives them the assignment, Charlena got up and stomped out in her red bottoms, honey. Grabbed the key and left old Otis in the dust. Watch my dust. <laughs> Baby, she left on his ass standing right there, honey. I hope he hit your ride, honey. So he won't let her eat and she won't let him ride home. Child, it's the toxicity for me. In the next scene, Otis is meeting with his dad to get some help and some advice about what's going on with him and Charlena. And his dad was with his mom for 40 years before she passed away. My condolences to you, Otis. And he starts telling him about the relationship that they had. And Otis tells his dad that he listens to Charlena but she don't know it. Otis, she don't be saying not nothing. What exactly is she listening to? White noise? You say nothing. Absolutely nothing. Boy, goodbye. So dad says, well, you know what? So I'm gonna stop you right there. You need to make sure that there's a way that she knows that you're listening. So then he says that him and Charlena argue and they just say whatever they want to say to each other. And he wants to know how his dad kept it together all these years with his mom. Like, how did you keep your cool? Like when she was acting a fool and all your friends were roasting her. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all know I got to do it. I think it's so uncool. I think you're acting a fool and all my friends be roasting you. Shout out to Melody. Y'all know I got to fit that in, honey, because we didn't have love and marriage. Huntsville this week. Moving forward. So dad basically said, don't add fuel to the fire. If she already mad, then just step away for a minute. Keep your cool. Don't yell and listen to what each other is saying. His dad seems so sweet, but y'all know what, honey, they get sweeter when they're older, but they be a fool when they're younger. So I'm wondering if he used to be like Otis. And I'm also wondering if Charlena is like Otis's mom, because, you know, they say you marry people like your parent. So I'm wondering if that's how his mom used to act. 
In the next scene, Ken and Shorty, they're at home, and he's making breakfast and whatnot. And he says that because of yesterday, he wants to just go out and try to vibe and, you know, get that old thing back and get back what made them fall in love with each other. He wants to go on a date. So she was like, so we're not going to talk about what happened at the session? And he's like, yeah, we'll talk about that at dinner. I see what he's trying to do, but it seems like he's trying to sweep things under the rug because he don't want to get put outside. That's what it's seeming like to me. But what y'all need to do is address her emasculating you in front of everyone. And we need to address you screenshotting those bank statements. Like, I'm not understanding why Dr. Nicole is not digging deep when it comes to this couple. This should have been the first home visit. Do you hear me? This should have been the first couple that they visited and sat down with so that they could dissect exactly what the hell is happening. Because, honey, I'm so confused. It's like, on the one hand, She's emasculating him. So it's like, dang, girl, do you really got to say it like that? But then I understand her frustration because it's like I've been putting up with this mess and now I'm fed up. So I'm not going to spare your feelings because you don't spare mine. And then child, it's just a whole, f we're going to get to it. Let's, let's We're going to get to it. So then he changes his mind and he was like, all right, we can talk about it now. So Kenneth was like, so what did you mean by me trying to date women out of my league? Like, are you trying to say that I don't date beautiful women? Like I can't get a beautiful woman. She said, I didn't say that. And they rolled the tape back. Girl, you did say that. You said he likes beautiful women. You said you want a beautiful woman. So she was like, um, no, what I said is exactly what I said. I said, you want a beautiful woman that has all the things that you don't have yet. So he was like, that's offensive. Cause it's not true. Like I could have a woman any woman that I want, but I chose you. So they're going back and forth and forth and back. When she speaks to him, she always sounds like she's speaking to a child. And that's what happens when the woman pays all the bills. If you're going to sit up and be a man that's kept, then this is what you got to put up with. I mean, it's just as simple as that. She treats him like he's less than because he's not pulling his weight. It's not right, but that's what she's doing. Child, I could never. He's talking to her, right? And he goes, I can have me a nice lady if I want to have a nice lady. She said, well, you have one now and you don't appreciate it. He said, I do appreciate it very much. You don't give a damn. So they go on round and round the mulberry bush, right? And she says she feels like she's out of his league. So he resents her and takes everything she says as harsh judgment and criticism. Girl, ma'am, it is criticism. It is. Harsh judgment, maybe not so much, but criticism, absolutely. And um, I beg to differ. He resents you because you put him down every chance you get. And stop saying that you're out of his league. If you were out of his league, he would have never gotten your attention, period. Because when someone is out of your league, they're unattainable. That's what that means. So the fact that you're together, you're not out of his league, honey. Unless you were having an off day. And when y'all met, you gave him a chance. Honey, please explain it to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Can y'all comment down below and tell me what out of your league means? Because I thought it meant, look at me. There's no way that I would date you. I'm unattainable. So, girl, anyway, moving forward. So then she goes, yeah, you know, like my parents, they told me that I'm not supposed to just wait for somebody to take care of me. I need to be able to take care of myself. And that's absolutely sound advice. So Kenneth got very upset when she said that. And he's like, well, you wouldn't even have me here if I wasn't holding up my end of the bargain. If I wasn't taking care of my responsibilities, you're 40 years old. And when he said that, I think what he was trying to say is a woman of your age would not just have any old kind of man. So at 40, you would think you'd have a man that would be able to take care of himself. But she took it as he was trying to call her old. But I don't think that's what he was trying to say, child. He don't be speaking his speech right. So she's like, I don't know what you're doing here. Honey, I don't know either. So he's like, well, I must be doing something right. She said, okay, so we're going to see how long you stay around since you want to throw up the fact that I'm 40. Women are to be taken care of, not to be taken care of. I know that's right, child. I do like that little slogan, honey. We got to get that on a t-shirt. Okay, so actually, this is what I think. I think that she may resent him because she feels foolish for choosing a man that can't take care of her. Child, these two are hard to watch, okay? They both have resentment toward each other. In the next scene, Otis and Charlena are at home, and she comes in waiting for her day, looking so pretty. I like that dress, girl. Okay, outfit. I like that. So Otis starts to speak his speech, child, and he apologizes. And she was like, I can't believe nothing that you say. Whatever you say, I don't believe it. In the confessional, she said being insincere is not going to win her back. Oh, y'all broke up? Girl, what is happening? I don't know, child. This must be about more than that DM. He must have done something like this before. Either he's cheated before, he's broken her trust before, she's found DMs, phone calls, text messages. It's something. 
because she too hype. Like, so she wants him to show that he's sorry, but she doesn't know how she wants him to show that he's sorry, but she just wants him to be sorry. Well, you better put on some Reuben Studdard, honey. This is my sorry for 2004. Honey, I don't know if y'all knew each other back then, honey, but just put it on, child, because you're going to have to show and prove these little words, they don't mean nothing, which tells me that you've been yapping. You've been doing something. You've been talking. You've been speaking your speech, but you ain't changed, okay? Changed behavior is the only way that it's going to work. So then they discuss him listening and trying to get better. So after going back and forth, he gets upset because he feels like she's pointing the finger. Well, you did it. So what is she supposed to do? Not address the fact that you did it? You should have been upfront to begin with. Then this dry conversation ends with him telling her to have fun on her date. He's like, yeah, my dad's advice didn't work. I mean, maybe my mom was easier to talk to. Otis, you don't say anything of substance, child. Anywho. In the next scene, Shay is at home and her family is coming over, her mom and her aunt Nisi, and she wants to get some advice. Shay, you already know what to do, honey. You just want to see if maybe they'll co-sign it. That's, the, that's what it's giving me. I know because I used to be that. I used to be like, well, I just want to see what y'all going to say. Girl, you already know the right thing to do. Just do it, honey. Shout out to Nike. So her aunt is a pastor and she wants to know what's going on. So she tells them with Fonzo and his family, she does not feel like he's making an effort and she doesn't feel, feel accepted by his family. So her mom tells her that she needs to tell him exactly what it is that she needs and what her needs are. And if he cannot meet them, then she needs to cut it off the first time that it happens. So Shay in her confessional, she's like, well, you know what? I've never drawn any boundaries. Like I've always just been go with the flow. So I feel like I'm going to take that advice. Yes, with a man like Alfonso, you have to let him know up front how serious you are about being respected and protected. And he cannot do anything outside of that. Because see, what he feels like is that because he's attached to Rick Ross and he in that life and, you know, he likes the good time fun girls. So if you're going to be the good time fun girl in the relationship, he going to treat you just like them. No, I am to be respected and protected, period. Child, please. So her aunt said, you know, we often accept things less than what we are worth. But she needs to know if she can deal with that for the next five years. Like, are you willing to put up with that? So Shay is like, well, you know, I don't want to prematurely walk away. Shay, he went on a whole Johnson's family vacation, honey. They were on the I-10 by 10. You were at home watching the IG stories of him on a family vacation. It has been three years. You're not ready to go nowhere, child. You're not ready. That's just an excuse. Prematurely? What are you talking about? You're just not tired yet. It's okay. When you get tired, then you'll walk. And, and that's just for anybody in a situation like Shay. She wants someone to co-sign it. She doesn't want to walk away. She's given the excuses. So when you're actually tired, then you'll walk. So her aunt said, listen, if he's not giving you what you're giving, you can't waste yourself like this here. You can't do that. I love this aunt, and I love her advice. I need an aunt Nisi. Shout out to aunt Nisi, honey. That was on some real advice, okay? Don't waste your good years on him, girl. You're going to waste all your popping years hanging out with Alfonso not willing to commit. Oh, uh, okay. In the next scene, Chris, a.k.a. Odell Beckham, because, honey, that's exactly who you reminded me of, have everything. They, not, they don't look exactly alike, but they could be in the same tribe and whatnot. So he's meeting with Charlena for the date. I did not like Chris at all. I do not like him. Sam I am I do not like green eggs and ham honey I did not like Chris I don't like him at all he's 34 and has dated a woman with a boyfriend he's like yeah it was fun oh, okay so already it's a hell no okay because you're okay with shenanigans which means that you're not looking for anything serious you just want her to hang out when she's mad with the boyfriend so you don't have to be too committed mm, no it's a no so she was like, well, you know, my first impression of him is he's athletic and he's attractive. So they get inside. She takes off her jacket. Here you go. Damn. Something about him screams. I just want to smash. Is it just me? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So they start having small talk about where they're from. And she's like, so how do you feel about going out with um, somebody else's girlfriend? He's like, you know, I hung out with people before that have had boyfriends. Red flag. And she's like, so what does that mean? She said, is that easiest for you? Because, you know, some men like to do that so they don't have to spend too much time. So then he said, oh, I'll tell you on our second date. I would never go out with him again. It's a no. She's like, well, I'm going to have to keep my eye on him. So I just don't really know about him. He gives me player vibes. Absolutely. Child, please. 
So then they started talking about his ex because apparently she went to FAMU and so did Charlena and her high sex drive and them having threesomes. Okay, they can go ahead and end this date. He represents what you don't look for in a man. He seems like his mentality is still stuck in college or high school. It's cringe, honey. It's, it's giving cringe. He had nothing of substance to say at all. So in the confessional, Charlene is like, well, Chris is trouble, but the fun kind, just what I need right now. Girl, you don't want to deal with Chris. Girl, I've been and picked up something you can't put down. Honey, absolutely not, honey. Uh-uh. This is not the answer to Otis acting up. This date seems like it should have taken place in the school cafeteria, honey. It was a childish mess. In the next scene, Shorty and Kenneth go out for their date. He was like, yeah, I got my turtleneck on. You heard me? <laughs> Baby, Kenneth went and bought an entirely different wardrobe, honey, to go on this show, honey, like he was buying school clothes. Child, I am done. So they sit down and they start talking and he's telling her that he wants to just vibe. And she's like, no. Okay. She feels like he's laying it on thick, but it's more than just being lovey-dovey. He can't just brush things under the rug. So he's trying to come in for a kiss, right? She's like, no. You cannot just come in for a kiss. Like, you have to do something to make it real. Girl, just say you don't like this man, honey, because your man can come in for a kiss. Girl, go. So she tells him he has a fear of losing her, and that's what's driving him to say what it is he's saying. Well, you know, they always going to lay it on thick, honey, when they have a fear of you bouncing. You might want to teach Shay, because she can't get Alfonso to stop grinning. So he wants to wait until they get around Dr. Nicole to like basically hash out what they need to hash out. So she's telling him, Dr. Nicole is not going to be with us forever. At some point, you're going to have to hear what I have to say. And you know what this is making me think of? It's making me feel like he wants to pause whatever it is she has to say because he's fearful that she's going to say, I'm done. So he's trying to hush her. That's what it's giving me. So she said, you know, I feel like you fear losing me. So you don't want to open up. So he's like, well, it's hard to open up because I'm always on the defense. I'm trying to prove that basically I'm worth anything. I'm trying to make you happy. I was trying to make you smile. And every time she tears him down when he's about to say something, so he just shuts down. So in the confessional, she's like, you know, hearing him say what he wants, you know, on one hand, I like it because it's like, yeah, you need to man up. But on the other hand, I'm like, who are you talking to? Ma'am, the two of you need to get away and stay away from each other. You clearly aren't worried about making things work because this behavior is counterproductive. The two of you just going back and forth, it don't make no sense. You tear him down, then he gets upset, he stalks you out, it's toxic. Well, what kind of game are you playing? Because if this is enjoyment for you to watch him pipe up, then are you doing this only for the result? I'm not understanding what y'all are doing. He says she breaks him down and basically emasculates him at every turn. He said he constantly has to ask to speak because she interrupts him. He also says that she drains him and takes his soul. Well, what on earth are y'all doing together? She doesn't respect you as a man because you can't monetarily provide and you have no plan, according to her. You don't respect boundaries because why do you want a woman that treats you like her son? She has tried to leave you and you came to find her and stalked her out and she took you back. Kenneth, I'm speaking directly to you, honey, because I know you be down here in these comments. That is scary as a woman. When a woman says that she wants to leave, it is okay to let her go. She wants to leave. She's doing and saying things, hoping that you're going to leave her because it's going to be easier for her to get away if you make the decision versus her making the decision. So that's what she's really doing because there is no way the two of you need to stay together. Shorty, if you're going to beat him down every step of the way, then work on a safe way to leave so the both of you can be at peace. Because this show is definitely for you to exit stage left with documentation and you ain't fooling me. So she basically tells him, well, if you're that unhappy, then leave. Y'all know what I want? I want Kenneth to open his eyes up, both literally and figuratively. Because Charlie's eyes always look closed. <laughs> I know y'all see it. Baby, them eyes look sleepy, honey. I'm going to start calling him Sleepy Joe. In the next scene, Charlena and Otis go to meet to talk about the future of their relationship. Do y'all see the people in the background? Baby, them people in the background was like, what? They filming? What kind of show is that? Charlie, I was hollering. So they sit down to talk about the process and whatnot. And... He's like, I'm over the process. She said, what? Well, I'm not over it. I'm tired, but I'm always tired. So then he's like, are you eating? Otis, what? She's like, so is there anything else you want to talk about? He goes, nope, not really. And starts looking for the server. Why even show up if you're not going to talk about the issues? 
So she's getting frustrated because he's not willing to be truthful or open up about their issues and want to fix it. So she goes, when are you going to be in the mood to talk about it? He said, I'm not. Like I have my views and you have yours. I don't want to keep going around and around and back and forth. I don't have time. He's like, you're not hearing me when I say I don't want to talk. She's like, so you don't want to move forward. You don't want to talk about it. She's like, you need to start talking or we will not be moving forward. You're not saying nothing. So he shut completely down because he said that he's had trouble trying to talk to her about certain things because she's never listening. You're not saying anything though. What are you? She's like, so you're blaming me for your behavior? That's exactly what he's doing. He's like, I just want to move on from the DM. It's not that serious to you. It's not that serious to you. Me and I always want to move past something real quick and put a timestamp on your upset. I'm mad. Tell me something to get me unmad. Like, what are you talking about? It's not that serious. Well, sir, if the roles were reversed, you would be pissed. Okay, the flowers weren't that big of a deal, but you threw them away and had a full on mantrum. So now that she's upset about you being untrustworthy, because clearly you've done this in the past, honey, and you ain't fooling me. She needs to get over it because it ain't that serious. He's like, I don't even be remembering my days. Like, it's nothing really memorable. You want to talk about him, but I don't. She's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, since you don't want to talk, you can go your way and I'm gonna go mine. We're done. He's like, no, but we're having a conversation. She's like, no, don't tell me what to do. We're not having this conversation. No, don't tell me that. So then he's like, I've been sitting here trying to talk to you. What in the gas lighting hell are you talking about, Otis? You have not said anything. She asked you, did you want to talk? And you said, no. You've been trying to find the server. That's what you've been trying to do. You don't want to talk, but now you want to talk because she's saying she's done. Y'all ain't got time for this. And that was the end of the episode. Nobody. And I mean, bet nobody. Get down on bended knee. I'm not playing with y'all because y'all have not yet grown from boys to me. I don't have time for this, child. This is some foolery. This is some downright foolery. Child, y'all comment down below. Even though I'm late, honey, comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. None of these people should be together. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.